celebrate God's faithfulness, especially this Sunday is more about that God has been with us 15 years and it's a joy. I mean, it's just sheer joy just to think about it or even, you know, comprehend that he was so faithful in our ups and our downs and um, seen unseen uh, things of the journey that we have gone by together as a family. We want to uh, take this time to praise God, thank God, and even as we do that together as His bride, let's stand to our feet. Um, let's give Him all and all that we have. Um, I always encourage that, you know, we, 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 we can have troubles all the time. We have needs all the time. We have desires all the time. I somehow feel it's never ending. I can't count a day where I don't have something that I have to ask God for. I always have something to the simplest, to the difficult. But maybe I want you to, uh, I want to encourage each one of you this morning, just be carefree. You know, just don't bother about anything, nothing that's important or unimportant. But today the important thing is he's here. He's come to meet you and me very personally. He's come just for you and me. And I think we have to make the best use of this time. He's ready to minister to us in our worship and our praise through the word, through the fellowship, everything that happens here this morning in the next two hours. But are we ready? Are we ready to give the fullest, our full attention towards him? All our praise, our worship, everything that is within us, are we able to give that worship to him? I encourage you this morning to be at that place. Don't worry about things around you people around you. It's, it's never about things around us when we are in His presence. It's all about Him. Don't, don't, I would say don't miss that opportunity. It's about Him. Father, we thank you for this beautiful, beautiful yet another Sunday. We want to praise you that we are able to see this day. It's because of your grace and your mercy. We totally acknowledge that and we want to praise you, Jesus. Father, even as we come, I pray that you, uh, you know, just uh, work in our minds and our hearts. We don't know what kind of frame of mind that we walked into this place this morning. Nevertheless, I pray, Holy Spirit, as we invite you into this place, I pray that you uh, take over everyone who's inviting you. Lord, I pray that you will be the one who will minister to every heart that is reaching out to you this morning. May you be the one to get all the praise and worship and glory and honor, Lord, for who you are and what you are and only what you can do. Nothing we can bring to the table, Lord, to say a thank you. Just our lives that are so filthy, but still, Lord, you wash us, as you, you wash us off and you, and you look at us as white and snow. And we praise you, Father God. And we come with that confidence this morning to celebrate you. Celebrate you in truth and in spirit. And, and as we sing, as we give our worship and praise to you, let this place jubilate with praise to you, Father God. May you dance over the praise that's going to be offered to you, Lord Jesus. And may you alone receive the glory. We give each one who's serving I give us, each one of us in your hands. And I pray, Jesus, that you'll flow in and through us as we minister. I also pray, Lord Jesus, for Pastor Srini as he brings the word. I pray, Jesus, that he'll come out like a double-edged sword, that every heart that is looking for to, to, to receive it, Lord, will receive it in greater measure. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that you're going to do here. For the next two hours, all glory, honor belongs to you because you're God of the impossible. You can do everything. You can do everything. Nothing is impossible with you. We want to praise you. We want to say it over and over our lives when we come into your presence. Nothing is impossible as long as we align ourselves to you. Lord, I pray that this time will be all about you all about you alone. May you receive praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship Jesus together. Good morning, church. Can somebody shout good morning? How many of you are doing? How are you doing this morning? Doing good? Great? 
turn to the person next to you and say it's going to be an awesome day how many of you prepared your hearts to receive what god has instilled in our lives this morning i write to receive i write to sing along and celebrate with us this morning i write to sing along and celebrate Somebody give a big 
Lord of our soul, Lord Almighty. Whenever you are, make it louder, make it louder. Amen. How many of you believe there is nothing that is impossible to Him? Did you believe that? Come and turn to the person next to you and say, there is nothing that is impossible to Him. Let's do that. Let's do that. Come and turn to the person next to your left and do that. How many of you are ready to dance along with us this morning? How many of you know this song which says, God is great dance floor? If you know this song, we want somebody to dance around, sing as loud as you can, and have a smile on your face. Is that okay? Can we do that? Can somebody shout, Amen? Can somebody shout, Hallelujah? I'm coming back to the start where you found me. I'm coming back to your heart. I surrender. Take me. This is all I can bring.
to dance along with us? Are you all ready? Come on, lift your hands and say that. Well, let's do very simple songs. Is that okay? Let's do a simple song. So we're gonna we're gonna sing. I feel alive. I come alive. Is that okay? And we're gonna show you the steps. Okay? We'll 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 show you the actions. Okay? Just follow us around. Is that okay? Come on! I feel alive, I come alive, I am alive, on God's great dance floor. Here we go! I feel alive, I come alive, I am alive, on God's great Is that easy? dance floor. Come on. Make your praise louder in this place. Make it louder. Amen. So let's do some more exercise. <laughs> Just to praise the Lord for all the strength which he has given us. Amen. To dance in his courts. We have danced enough but it's not yet enough. So let's, we are already on our feet. So I just would request you to now have some energy to sing for the Lord as well so I'll just um, speak out these words and you just have to repeat after me right Bolo Nam Yeshu Nam Bolo Nam Yeshu Nam Bolo Nam Yeshu Nam Yeshu Nam Bolo Nam Yeshu Nam Yeshu Nam Bolo nam ishu nam ishu 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 nam
शहर में यीशु का नाम ऊंचा उठाने हम करेंगे बल्ले बल्ले और बोलेंगे आवाज उठा के तू ही है आशा तू ही भरोसा तू ही है मेरा बस एक खुदा बोलो नाम सुना मे सुना lifting your hands to heavens uh, what a faithful god we have what a good god we have he has been faithful to our church for all these years he's been faithful to you and me personally such a great god he alone is god and at this time as we have come together to praise him to lift him up to worship him can we all like paul says in romans can we all offer our lives as living sacrifice telling god lord i belong to you i don't belong to myself i am yours all i have all i am i am yours god you are all to me and i want you to work in my life can we all ask god to work in our life to work in ways which we have not seen to do things beyond our imagination let's just say here i am lord i am here it's between you and god right now let's lift him up down on my knees again surrendering all surrendering all and find me here lord as you draw me near i'm desperate for No 
speak to Heavenly Father this morning. Would you all open your hearts, lift up your voices, begin to praise Him, thank Him for all the things that He has done over the past years. Thank Him for the way that He is ministering to you each and every single done, every single Sunday. Would you all take a moment to lift up your hands wherever you are. Take a moment. Lift up your voices. Begin to praise Him. Lord, I thank you for everything that you have done in our lives, oh Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the way that you have been ministering over the past 15 years, oh Jesus. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the miracles, for the blessings, for the healing in this place, oh Jesus. And we fought our battles, oh Lord, in this place, in your name. We thank you for that. Take this moment, just wherever you are, lift up your voice. Lift up your hands and begin to praise Him in your, in his, in your own words. He's ready to listen to every single word that you utter, every single word that you speak. He's ready to listen. He's ready to minister to you so powerfully in this place. Let's all prepare our hearts to prepare what God has in store for you and for me. Thank you for all the things that into place. Yeah. 
Thank you that you have given us this opportunity to see what you can do and be part of this journey. Wonderful journey it was, God. Fifteen years as we stand and look back and um, we know this is, this is an amazing journey. We thank you. Thank you for every single experience. We praise you, God. Thank you for everyone who's been part of this journey. Praise you, God. Bless you. Bless you. We want to thank you, God, this, this morning. May, may you, God, may you continue to be glorified in our worship. May you continue to build your throne upon our praises. This, this grateful heart. We don't know how, how else to express but to sing to you and just... Just say words that come from our heart. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you, God. Would you like to take a couple of minutes to sit down? And I know, uh, I, first of all, I want to thank you for just waiting for the first service to exit. And, you know, we had a wonderful uh, morning service, and I want to thank you um, for just, you know, even though we delayed it like like an hour almost, you still stuck with us and stayed with us today. And I want to praise God for that. Um, uh, what we have here is nothing short of a miracle. I told that in the first service, and I'm telling it again. Um, uh, I, I don't think we would have ever imagined that we'd be in this place today, uh, last year. We would not have imagined that we'd be in this place 15 years ago at Wang's Kitchen when we met. 13 of us, we gathered together in Wang's Kitchen and uh, I want to praise God for this entire journey. When we started up there on the 16th of September in 2007, um, I didn't think we'd make it this far. And uh, not that I don't trust in God, not that I don't believe in the ability of God, but I didn't trust in myself. And I, I didn't think I was good enough to do what God is asking me to do. Um, but God, I, you, know, you should hear the word today. So I, I, I would not uh, talk more than this. But I want to praise God for friends who stuck with us right from the day one till today. And I want to praise God for friends who came for seasons uh, and journeyed along with us. And, you know, when they finished their work, God, um, you know, moved them on. And they moved on. And I want to praise God for that. Uh, those who are with us, those who have been with us, I want to praise God for every single one of them. And a couple, couple of people, of course, I want to thank God for um, the guy who's on the corner at, on the keyboard. He, he's there from the day one. Actually, I didn't mention that in the first service, that he was there when we started talking about Capstone. Uh, well, as a church, you know, we wanted to plant a church in Idex City. And me, uh, you remember the conversation we had uh, in Narsapur Express. I was coming from Narsapur along with him uh, to Hyderabad. And I was speaking in a youth camp, and he was there. Uh, youth, I think Youth Christmas, and then both of us, we had a conversation, I told him, you know, I'm planning to plant a church in high-tech city, would you like to join me? He, he has never met me, he just met me the previous night, um, and I don't know why he decided to journey with me, and thank you, Joe, for being on this journey, thank you, thank you so much. You know, sometimes gifts don't express our gratitude in our hearts. Uh, and God tied our hearts together um, like David and Jonathan's. We fight. Sometimes we don't talk for a long time. But then we never leave each other. And I want
want to thank God for Joe um, and, and uh, his family. And this, of course, there are other people who are with us in this journey, and I want to thank God for one of them who's going to come on stage right now, and she wants to share something with us. She's there day one. She's our first host in the church, right? And, uh, in the Wang's kitchen. Nobody would want to get inside that, that, you know, that restaurant, and she would be there standing at the, at the door and welcome people. Can I have my um, Introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Kala. Um, Coming from a Hindu background, this is my home church. Uh, this is where God con convicted me uh, that I am a sinner. And this is where uh, I changed from believing God to knowing God. This is where uh, pastor and everyone taught me that we need to do God's will, but yet we need to honor our mother and father. So I waited seven years to get married uh, to a person God has shown, a Christian. And they did uh, happily uh, given me uh, to a Christian. This is the church where uh, I didn't even know how to pray. I don't know uh, how to pray. And pastor encouraged me to start a prayer group in the IT company where there is no prayer group. I started it with three people. And now I think it is 200 or I don't know. I'm not there. Um, so I'm just very thankful. This is the faith builder sessions or the fellowship that we had that have built my faith so much. I'm so strong in faith with God that each, even the small thing every day that I do, I just ask God. I just talk to God every minute. Even if I cook, if guests come, I pray that it should turn well. Like that, it's like every day, every minute talk with him. And uh, now I'm in a place where I'm just enjoying God's presence in everything. He's like talking to me through word, uh, what is going to happen next? He's revealing it to me through word, through dreams, and uh, through thoughts. I was like amazed every day how he's like he's just uh, disciplining me or correcting me or warning me. I, I I cannot express in words. I need to share lots of testimonies to do that. But it is so amazing to be filled with God's presence, and I believe. Um, God, Pastor, you started this classroom for me, and the purpose is fulfilled. <laughs> and I'm sure many more people uh, might have changed like me. And uh, this place is blessed, and um, we are human beings. We fall and we rise, and God is always waiting for us um, to turn back to him. And I believe he's there with us, with Capstone all the time, and uh, he will make us soar higher and higher and reach many more people. Um, and uh, I just want to encourage, uh, take this moment to encourage everyone. Um, because at that moment, we were like 30 people. So we had lots of fellowship. And those sessions, it was so uh, like faith building for me. And, and I'm, now that we are so grown, uh, 300 or 250 people, I encourage everyone to uh, be part of fellowship. We are created to have fellowship. So we will learn. I have learned so many things from uh, fellowship only. And uh, the more I started spending with the children of God, the more I became closer to God. And the more I spent with God, the, I cannot uh, tell you in words the experience that I'm having with him. So I encourage everyone to be part of the fellowship, uh, to spend time with God's children, uh, to be part of our plugins and all the sessions that pastor is conducting. I, because we need them. We need to spend more time with God to experience him. That is all I wanted to say. <laughs> I did, just now I told Pastor I want to share. Uh, thank, thank you, Pastor. You. Come on. Thank you. I've never baptized anyone. Um, and uh, when uh, I was supposed to baptize Kala, she was the first one I had to baptize. And I didn't know whether she'll come back from the water. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think she was the first one who was filled with the Holy Spirit in the church. Uh, and spoke in tongues, you and Anushya, Anushya, I think. Yeah. So I want to praise God for people like that. Anyway, what more can you say more than this, right? I want to thank God for this day. Kala was not supposed to be here this weekend. Did you know that? And so she was not in the plan too. And she made it this morning along with her husband and, uh, and kids. And I don't know, where is Benny? Um, I can't see Benny. Okay, so they, they were not supposed to be here this weekend. They were supposed to be their hometown, but they just made it for this morning and be with us today. So I want to thank God for this, friends. 
who were there right from the beginning. I also want to thank God um, for friends who were with us in the journey and then moved on to, to do what God called them to do and uh, to, to, at places that God called, placed them to be in. And I want to thank God, most importantly, that this year God brought more people um, and connected them to me, strangers who believed in me. Um, more than any other year, I found it so difficult to believe in human beings at the same time believe in human beings. It was difficult to trust people. And it, it, probably this year taught me to trust people more. And uh, because God brought just strangers to help me. This place, the way it looks right now is, um, what everything that, that this, uh, you know, the, the way that this place took shape, it was always in my head. And I, I was not in a place where I can make this happen. Um, maybe two years ago, maybe I would have dared to do that. Um, but last year, especially this December, the year December that passed by, um, I, I don't think I was in a place where I, I thought this would be possible. Now, I told you missions, missions is a heart of mine. If, if you've been with the church, you know that Pastor Beats, mission, Pastor Hearts, always missions. This is the first year after we began to give out for missions. This is the first year, I mean, not this year, the last year was the first year we couldn't give to missions as a church. And I, I felt really ashamed of myself that I couldn't, I couldn't help people that I promised that I'd help. Um, um, so in, the, in, from, in that place, God brought people, one after the other, who just stood by me and said, we believe in you. And um, when we talk, talk, thought of this place and we thought we'll do this place and we got this at a, at a great price. I didn't share this in the first service, I'm just sharing with you now, you'd know why. Um, uh, we, we, we didn't know we could do this. And um, the person who did this um, simply looked at me and said, Pastor, don't worry, I'll do it for you. I'll finish what is in your head for you and give it to you. You can pay me back slowly, but you don't have to worry about it right now. Just, just tell me what you want. And I want to praise God. Brother, Brother Suresh, I want, I, you would know how grateful I am uh, for, you know, I don't know why we got connected. I don't know why God connected me with you. Maybe for this. And maybe this was the vision that, uh, you know, this was the thing. So, like Esther, who was used for such a time as that, this probably was the reason why God brought you into our lives. And you, you believed in me more than I believed in myself. And, you know, I, my wife was sitting across the table in, in your office. and. We, re we still remember what you told us, and uh, we will not forget that. So thank you very much for, you know, for this place. Thank you. And I know God worked it through you. So I, I don't know, if, do you have a bouquet? Can I have a bouquet, please? Yeah, come, come, come. And I think it's so good to have a, him uh, with, uh, with his family today, with us, uh, sister and, and, and daughter. Would you like to? I just want to have a picture with you. That's why I'm trying to do this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you very much. You gave me a chance to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Just to, if you're a Capstonian, you've got to make sure you go and meet him and say thank you. Would you do that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm going to keep him. <laughs> Usually he runs away, so I'm going to keep him there. Make sure that all of you would meet him and say thank you to him. So I want to praise God for that. Yesterday, Madhubal Auntie was here. We had a fantastic day yesterday. Uh, a whole day, morning sessions and evening sessions. Anna uh, brought the word of God from, from the heart. And if you were here yesterday, would you just take a moment to clap our God? You know, clap for Anna and the way he brought the word, both in the morning and in the evening. Did you, if you heard him, even, I know some of you, uh, some of the first service people came and said, we couldn't, we just got stuck in traffic. So we sat in the car and watched the service online. Thank God you did that online that last evening. And so I want to praise God that God gave us the technology to do that. And what a, what a session it was, uh, both morning and in the evening. I want to praise God um, for you and thank you for being with us uh, today. Um, um, bef before Anna comes on stage, I, I just want to mention what Auntie Madhubala shared with us. Um, so I know what God uh, put in my heart as a theme for this, uh, this anniversary is revive us, God, because that was the prayer that the psalmist prayed 
in Psalm 85 saying, revive us, O oh God, give us a fresh start. This is a new season. Um, so we, we're asking God, God, would you just give us a fresh start? Um, and I've, I've been trying to think, how, how, what do I want to see church as in the future? And I, I got a couple of thoughts and I started writing them down and I wanted to share that uh, with you as a church and I'm going to do that next Sunday when, when, you, when we gather together. Um, but Auntie Madhubala yesterday when she came and she just greeted us and she shared what God placed in our heart um, as to how Capstone would look like in the future. And she took a psalm, uh, as that's what Holy Spirit inspired her to do, took a psalm and, um, 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 you know, she uh, personalized it for us as a church. And so if you're a Capstonian, you really got to listen to this. Uh, psalm 15, um, let me read that for you. Um, as, she, as she personalized it, let me read that for you. Psalm 15. Who may worship in your sanctuary, Lord? Who may enter in your presence on your holy hill? Only Capstone and every Capstonian. Not, not, not just our church, you know what she means, right? And she goes on to say, uh, she said, it's beautiful. Um, Capstonians lead blameless lives and do what is right. Speaking truth from a sincere heart. Capstonians refuse to gossip or harm their neighbors or speak evil of their friends. Capstonians despise flagrant, uh, flagrant sinners and honor faithful followers of the Lord. Capstonians keep their promises even when it hurts. Capstonians lend money without charging interest. And, uh, 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 and uh, um, Capstonians cannot be bribed to lie about the innocent. Such people, which people? Capstonians will stand firm forever. Oh, you got to praise God for that. What a vision it is. What a vision it is to think about. Think about this. Go, go back and keep reading Psalm 15. And I thought, wow, what, what, a, what a picture of a church. This is God's vision given to Madhubalanti to convey to us. And I was, I was asking God, how do I want to see the church? And I, this is how God wants, uh, God is going to see us, you know, turn into uh, as people. And I want to praise God for that. Such a, what a great vision it is. It's not just for our church. And I think it, it should be applied for us personally. And uh, put your name there and keep reading that. And this is what you need to become. If you are not there, you can be there. And this is what we need to all aim for. And may God help us to be there. Say amen. amen. You got to say that. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. We want, we're going to do, I just, I know, I, I know, I just want to create a moment for you, Anna, so before you can come on stage. Um, um, I think the song, uh, we're going to sing that song. And I, I love the first stanza of the song, Danyavad Ke Saath, Yogit Saath Se Badkar. With the words ring so true to me. Uh, um, and if you were uh, with me on this journey, you would know that we all feel the same way. God gave us more than what we deserve. We thank God for what he has given to us. Would you like to stand to your feet? Just join one stanza and we will um, you know, invite Anna to come on stage and bring the Lord's word to us. Thank you, Jesus.
Opportunity it is for us to come into your presence to worship you and just remind ourselves of your faithfulness. And we thank you. We thank you for who you are, just for who you are. And we praise you, God. Would you be uh, glorified in our worship? And would you just begin to speak into our lives, God? Speak to us what we need to hear. Your servants are listening to us. To you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So without wasting much time, I'm going to invite. Um, Pastor Srinivasana to come onto the stage and bring God's word to us. Would you answer together? Welcome. Good afternoon and greetings to all in Jesus' precious name. It's such a joy for me to be here uh, in this uh, yesterday's conference and so also in this anniversary celebrations. I told this in the first session, uh, first service, and I repeated that, you know, I want to appreciate as much as we appreciate God for this 15 years that God has led you all but also appreciate each of you who have contributed into the church by being there. Number two, by your service, by your giving, by your prayers, by your encouragement. Nothing done for God, nothing done in the name of God ever is a waste. Nothing is insignificant when it is done for the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I'm a pastor, I better understand it. So thank you for that amazing testimony also that you shared. You know, uh, nothing gives greater joy to a pastor than to hear such testimonies. It's worth it. Also appreciate this family and brother. I've heard so much about him, about you through Pastor Chaitanya. We thank God for people like you and your family. I'm sure God's blessing and reward is always there for you. Amen. So. This afternoon, as I am, after quite some years, I am doing a second service where I have to preach the same sermon again. Actually, they say it is easy to repeat, but I will tell you it is not easy, right? But I believe the Lord will minister. I had a word from the Lord that God put into my heart for each of you and also corporately for you as a church. And uh, this afternoon, as we are looking into the Word of God, I want to talk about you. I want to introduce you to yourself through the eyes of God. Then I want to introduce to you another servant of God, introduce a time frame, bring in the purpose of God, and tie all of this up with your response, what God wants you to do. You and the church both are an idea of God. God made you with a divine plan and with a divine purpose. I want to read to you, number one, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, if we will read that, please. The Bible tells us here, I'm talking about you, right? Whether you're newly born again, whether you're born again for a long time, or maybe you are involved in some kind of a ministry. I met some very precious young uh, I, I can't call them sisters. They are <laughs> younger than my own daughters. I have a daughter who is 24 doing a master's, and then I have a son who is 19. I think they were younger than my daughters. 
and they were uh, doing the work of god they came and said you know i was so glad that what work they are doing and even if you are part of that group or you doing some ministry hear the word of the lord today before i take you into the purposes of god i want to introduce you to yourself in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 the bible says even before he made the world god loved us chose us in christ to be holy and without fault let us also read second timothy chapter 1 and verse 9 you know there are a couple of things that we need to understand about ourselves because the lies of the devil are easier to believe than the truth of the word of god many a times we find it very easy to believe the lies what devil has been talking to us about ourselves he lies about everything but especially about us in second timothy 1:9 bible is talking about you here he says who has saved you called you with a holy calling not according to your works but according to his purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus even before the world began if you will read jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 there are many more verses but i'll stick to these three all right in jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 the prophet jeremiah says god chose me even before i was formed in the womb of my mother right that means even before your conception took place within your mother's womb you were created even before you were conceived in your mother's womb you were created that is what the bible says i knew you before i formed you in your mother's womb before you were born i set you apart and appointed you as a prophet unto nations this is not only to jeremiah this is to you also we read second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 that god saved you and god called you then before you came into this world because acts chapter 16 the bible says i will not go into too many verses due to paucity of time but i want to you to understand you today because one of the things i liked her testimony is i came into this church the church taught me not only to believe but to know god well done that's why we are here we we are here to introduce god to you so that your knowledge of god will grow but that doesn't only suffice you need to know your god you need to know yourself who god made you to be so here the bible says in acts chapter 16 the place of your birth the time of your birth was determined by god and then when you read Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 the bible says in the fullness of time that means when the appropriate time came god manifested his son the lord jesus christ into this earth as a man but when you read second timothy 1:9 which we read just now even before the foundation of the world you and i were there in christ jesus that means you were there christ was there all of us were there in the heavens only thing is we were not manifested but at the time of your birth when you were conceived in the womb of your mother god brought you out that means the value that god has placed upon you is very immense you don't carry a price tag because you are priceless you are not an incident of two human beings coming together nor an accident of birth you are a person made by god god planned to make you god created you within himself zechariah chapter 12 verse 1 the bible says god made you within himself you not only are made by god you are not only made like god you the real you are made within god the body that you are seeing today and you are taking care which will be with you till you breathe your last or the lord comes back is made from the dust and it will go back to the dust even before you saw the solar system you the stars or the galaxies were ever made you were already created in the lord but the bible says he created you means he made you then he manifested you 
he saved you he called you and now you may be sitting there and thinking hey pastor shrini sorry i'm not a pastor you're saying talking about calling excuse me every member is a minister according to the bible according to the word of god you are a priest you are a king you are an ambassador if salvation or the only soul goal of salvation was to take you to heaven i always wonder why after you were saved or i was saved tuck god should have taken us off into heaven boom i'm born again i'm saved next is you are in heaven i tell you as a pastor i wish it was true i didn't have to pastor a church at all it's not an easy job and for you also you got to come to the church you got to pay a tithe you got to be living here you got to live a holy life why all this janjat like they say in andhra you got to gone to heaven but if god in his plan purpose and wisdom kept you here it is for a purpose that was predetermined even before the foundations of the earth you carry in you a very high value the tragedy i think rick warren who wrote the book purpose driven life he said the greatest tragedy that happens to mankind is not death it is to live a life not knowing the purpose for which you have been created and the tragedy is 95% statistics and research data says 95% of the born again christians neither know the purpose of god nor they work that purpose of god into our lives you may be wondering hey pastor shree what are you telling me i come to the church regularly we praise god for that probably we have fasted and prayed for that right but there is something more into your life not only individually but corporately as a capstone church you are a living stone which god is using as a brick to build a building which will house so that corporately carrying the glory of god you will fulfill what god has brought you together here now having introduced about you that god kept you in preparation since eternity let me take you to joshua chapter 1 and let us read verse 1 it begins in my translation with the word now now after the death of moses the servant of the lord it came to pass the lord spoke to joshua the son of nun moses's minister before i explain verse 1 to you especially the word now let's read the verse 2 in my again in king james there's a, another word now said again here moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this jordan you and all his people unto the land which i do give to them even to the children of israel now follow me carefully please there is a now that began once moses died now anything that you read in the old testament if it is not relevant to you and i bears no meaning to us but i believe in these two now there is so much for us to learn and appropriate into our lives joshua is very similar to you and i because after the death of moses he stepped into a new dispensation of time which god called it the now for joshua there was a moses who had to die to step into the now but for you and i there was no moses who died there was a lord jesus christ before the lord jesus christ died we were sinners we were dead in our sins we were the enemies of god but after the death burial and the resurrection of the lord jesus christ the entire mankind and more importantly you and i we stepped into a dispensation which theologians call it as the dispensation of grace salvation by faith 
But now, just because we have stepped into the first now, the second now cannot happen automatically. It is like the first now takes you into a rail station. But the second now, for you to go in your onward journey, the second now is like you boarding the train. The first now takes you to a railway platform or a railway station. But unless you board the train, you're not going to move anywhere from there. That is why in the second verse, God told Joshua, Hey Joshua, now that you have come to the first now, by the virtue of the death of Moses, you need to arise because you have come to the second now. And that second now is not a dispensation of time. It is called the Kairos time. The Greek word Kairos means it is God's appointed time. It is God's favorable time. But now, I come from a Hindu Brahmin background. When I say God's appointed time, God's a favorable time, if you are from a Hindu background, like you testified, I am a Brahmin born, a Tam Bram, I'm a Tamil Brahmin. We had the good times, we call it the Rahu Kalam, the Ketu Kalam, the Yamagandam. I'm not talking about that. You need to understand that in the New Testament, I'll give you a be better example. When Jesus went to the pool of Bethesda, hundreds of sick people were there. Correct? And for them to be healed, they had to wait for an appointed time. An angel would come, stir the water. When the water is stirred, it was a time for healing. Whoever jumped in first got healed. But in the new covenant, you don't need to wait for an opportune time. The angel doesn't create the time. You know who creates the time? You create it by your faith. In the New Testament, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. You can create your Kairos moment if you will step up, arise by faith. Like Joshua stepped into a now dispensation of now, a Kairos of now. You, I believe, as a capstone, you have stepped into a dispensation, but that Kairos moment depends on you arising. If the dispensation of grace is a sovereignty, rather a will of God, every will of God, sovereignty of God, requires responsibility from man. The grace that came to save needed your faith to save you. Correct? The wine to happen, they had to fill the water pots with water. For Lazarus' resurrection, they had to roll the stone away. You have an integral responsibility in creating that Kairos moment. Why you have that responsibility? God doesn't ask you to do the impossible. He says, leave the resurrection to me and you roll the stone away. He said, you fill the water, I will make it wine. But there is a responsibility from our side. But to Joshua, when you read, okay, now God is telling, hey, Joshua, arise. Why is he telling him to arise? And not only God told him to arise, Three times in a space of four verses, when you read verse 6, God says, be strong and courageous. Verse 7, be strong and courageous. Verse 9, verse nine he says, I'm commanding you, be strong and courageous. I was, when I was studying the Bible, I started wondering, God, why are you encouraging these guys? Same thing repeatedly. In a space of four verses, you're saying it three times. Who was this Joshua? When God told him, hey, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous. Was he a kind of a novice? Was he a kind of a nervous person who had just been selected? Okay, nobody's there. Okay, Moses is dead. Okay, you come, you come here. Man, was he a bundle of nerves? Probably no. 
I will introduce Joshua to you in a little while. Because it didn't make sense to me why God was repeatedly telling him, be strong, be courageous. You know, I, I remember I got saved as a 17-year-old teenager on my way to commit suicide. When I accepted the Lord, I went into a youth meeting in a town called Bellari. That's where I grew up all my life. Until I moved to Dubai. And I went to a youth meeting, 15, 20 people were there with a few boys and girls. I looked for the nearest exit to dash and run away because most of the girls, I had ragged them to death in my school. I thought they will whack me there. But then my, 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 my brother, my, 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 uh, Pastor Rambo, who preached the gospel to me, said, no, no, sit down, Srini. They are all born again believers. They are all nice people. They are like Jesus. It took me years to believe that though, later. I sat down there. Man, I, first time in my life I'm stepping into a church. I'm from a Brahmin background. We don't know nothing. I remember when they gave the Bible to me, I did not even put it on the chair because I thought it's a holy book. Because I come from that background. And then the next Sunday he told me, come and share your testimony in this youth group. Man, I tell you, I don't know if you have ever had uh, been in that situation. I stood there. My knees were fellowshipping literally with each other. I had to literally hold my leg because it didn't stop shaking. My mouth went dry. My mind went blank. My eyes became dizzy. I thought I'm going to faint. And I thought, man, there is one impossibility in my life is to stand there on a public platform and speak. Somehow I finished whatever I wanted to tell. And I came and uh, whatever I was saying, rather, I sat down. Man, I tell you, if at that point of time, bundle of nerves, God had put an arm around my shoulder and said, Srini, be strong and courageous. My knees are shaking. Oh, thank you, God. Second time, be strong and courageous. Thank you, God. I needed that second dose. Third time, be strong and courageous. Wow, the third helping is good for me. Made sense for me then. But Joshua is not a kid here. He's almost 80 years old. 40 years he's been journeying with Moses. Let me introduce to you. Why I'm introducing Joshua is Joshua was in preparation for 40 years for this moment. But you, God has been preparing you for eternity for this moment. You don't need to be jealous of Joshua because Joshua is actually jealous about you. I'm sure all the Old Testament saints would have said, God, you should have put us in the New Testament. These guys have gotten away very free by grace. Right? Because in the Old Testament, somebody violated the Sabbath and they took a stone and they stoned him to death. Can you imagine how many church members would have died every Sunday? Thank God for the New Testament, guys. Amen. Sometimes we take life too easy, too much for granted. But Joshua is introduced. You know, we all know Joshua was a slave, born as a slave in Egypt. All their life they did only one thing and that was slavery. And now in Exodus, after they have exited Egypt, very gloriously crossed the Red Sea. And here they come and the Bible says the Amalekites come attacking them. These are a bunch of slaves. All their lives they have done only bricks. But then Moses, their senior pastor, says, hey, Joshua, come here, man. Take some few people with you. And do what, Moses? Do what, pastor? He says, go and fight the Amalekites. I'm going to go up to the mountain and I'll pray for you. Imagine if your senior pastor tells that. You have no experience or expertise of war. Have you been there? It was like I was saying my testimony that day. Never in my life have participated in elocution, debate, nothing. Testify what Jesus did in your life. I fainted almost there. The first introduction of Joshua in Exodus 17 is introduced to us as a warrior. And you know, when Moses went up to the mountain, uh, Aaron and Hur, they looked at it, battle, prayer. They said, I will also come with you for prayer. You know, we Christians, I tell you, prayer is the easiest escape for you and I. If somebody comes and says, brother, I'm having problem. Really? I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Come on, man. One day I prepared a sermon. The title kind of upset many a people. The title of my sermon was prayer necessarily. It's not the answer for everything.
If your husband is hungry, comes home after a long day's work, and he says, honey, I am hungry. Imagine the wife says, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you. That's where the third world war will break out. And James calls that kind of a faith as an hypocritical faith. I don't know why Moses and Hur went. Well, anyway, they were helpful in holding the arms of Moses and putting a stone there. But look at Joshua. He says, yes, sir. I love to have such people in my church, right? He says, sir, I have no experience. I have no expertise. But if you as a man of God are telling me, I will go for the battle. And Moses said, I pray you fight, we win. Did you hear me? If you are in Twitter, you should tweet this. I pray you fight, we win. You get it? Whether you fight, I pray, or you pray, or I fight, we win. Hallelujah. And here after that, Moses, uh, Joshua, in Exodus chapter 24, I'm just trying to kind of put some dots and then we'll join the picture and see who Joshua is. But I want to introduce you to yourself today more. Josh, in Exodus 24, Joshua the warrior becomes Joshua the minister of Moses. That means he was there. For Moses, then in Exodus 33, Joshua becomes a constant companion of Moses. Numbers chapter 13, Joshua becomes one among the 12 spies because he by then is one of the tribal heads in Israel. But now let me bring you to Numbers chapter 27. You know, all these things he did, like probably some of us here, you may have been involved in doing this and doing that. But in Numbers 27, God speaks to Moses saying, Hey Moses, you have done well in bringing Israel out of Egypt, but I'm not going to let you enter into the promised land. Moses is heartbroken. And Moses prays here. Let us read verse 16 please. Numbers 27 and 16. Moses prays, O oh Lord, let it appear on the screen. Thank you. O oh Lord, you are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Please appoint a new man as leader for the community. Now this is the prayer of Moses. Listen to me very carefully. In answer to the prayer of Moses, the Bible continues to say, and God speaks to Moses saying, Choose Joshua and publicly anoint him along with the priest Eliezer and ordain him as a leader in your place. The entire Israel is there. This is towards the end of the life of Moses. Hear me now. Why I am telling this is when you read Joshua chapter 1, God speaking to Joshua, you are not talking to, a, uh, to, 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 to an amateur. You're not talking to a guy who was caught off guard like me. Come and share your testimony. I would have rather died. Joshua was chosen. So are you. Joshua was called. So are you. Joshua was anointed. So are you. And then the Bible says, not only God told Moses to anoint him. When you read Deuteronomy, Chapter 1, verse 38. Let's read that. That's very interesting. I did not read this in the first service. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28, please. Okay. God tells Joshua, uh, Moses, I want you to do something. Oh, there you come. He says, where can we go, our brothers? Okay, is that 28? Oh, sorry, 38, my brother. This numbers and I always have a problem since childhood because they're told it is called mathematics. I always have a problem with numbers. Like I told yesterday, the only two places I like numbers, one is the book of numbers, number two is numbers when I collect the offering. Other than that, I'm allergic. Okay, instead... Your assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, will lead the people into the land. Encourage him, for he will lead Israel as they take possession. Hear me now. 
what is god telling moses he is saying i want you to do something that's the leader go spend time with him mentor him encourage him strengthen him time and again in deuteronomy it is there i will not go into the detail of the verses what i am trying to paint a picture here that when you look at a joshua in joshua chapter 1 he was a well prepared man 40 years 40 years if you want more i will give you deuteronomy 328 Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 28 There you go Instead commission Joshua encourage him strengthen him for he will lead the people Joshua was not a sudden thought of God chosen by God anointed by God mentored by Moses prayed over by Moses and Eliezer and here he steps into that Joshua chapter 1 hear me now if it took 40 years for Joshua to be prepared god has been preparing you even before the foundations of the world are you understanding what i am trying to do is i am trying to show you the value that god has placed upon you because of the purpose that is there into your life you are not simply saved to go to heaven no and you are not even saved to be where you are there is something greater that is awaiting you that's my word for you this morning this afternoon but joshua told like the wine needed the water resurrection of lazarus needed the stone to be rolled the grace required your faith joshua had a responsibility three times even though 40 years he was in preparation for what was coming from now god said joshua strengthen yourself encourage yourself three times why he must have said come on god i've already prepared this is what my children says especially my son when he has exams my wife has fever because he does not even remember his time table my daughter is not like that daughter is very studious but my son is still floating around now we have to tell him hey ashit today is your exam he says oh really thank you dad for telling that right and and and, and you know uh, if if i would tell my daughter you need to prepare it is irrelevant to her but for my son i need to keep telling keep telling keep telling but here when god tells to joshua it is not for what has happened god said for what is to happen and god is preparing you not to forget your past he is preparing you because from the now he is preparing you for your tomorrow god is in your tomorrow and from your tomorrow he prepares you today but the devil is in your yesterday using your yesterday he will destroy your future by wrecking your today and god told joshua get ready get ready get ready for what he said because i have chosen you that you will lead israel and take them into the purpose for which i have called them but before you go joshua he says i want to give you some bonuses he says what is it that god i'm telling you i'm giving you all the promises is because god is preparing you for something bigger something higher something deeper something which you have never experienced into your life the three promises god gave to joshua in chapter 1 verse 3 he says hey joshua every place on earth your foot shall tread i have given it to you blank check god gave him wow i love that and not only that then in the verse 5 he says there will be no man able to stand against you that means he said i will guarantee you there will be no enemy against you i would love to go into a boxing ring and fight a fight and be the gold medalist when there is no opponent for me that's what god is saying no man will be able to stand against you easy fight man god's making it easy for you you jump into the ring he gives you the victory and the next thing god told him is as i was with moses i will be with you joshua has seen how god was with moses he says in the same way i will be with you what an assurance amen and then he says i will not fail you i will never forsake you why god gave him all these assurances 
Why God told him three times in four verses, be strong, be courageous. Your responsibility, my part of the deal, wherever you go, I give it to you. Wherever you stand, every enemy I will remove. I won't fail you. I won't forsake you. Why? For the purpose God had prepared Joshua for. Everything that God has given to you in your life, including this church, is that will prepare you for the great purpose that God has in store for you. As much as Joshua was valuable, you are more in fact. And then after giving these promises, God tells Joshua, Hey Joshua, come on, now I want you to get ready. But before you get ready, I want you to make sure you're part of the deal. You be strong, you be courageous. You know, when you read these words, be strong, be courageous, be strong is a verb. Actionable thing. The Hebrew word has a three-dimensional thing. Number one, it says be aligned. Your life, the compass of your life must always be aligned to the word of God. Whether it is your personal life, your family life, your social life, your spiritual life, your financials, everything in line with the word of God. You can't put your leg on two boats. Nothing is going to happen. Number two, it says you need to attach yourself to God. That means you need to abide in a dynamic way, not in a static way. You need to abide in Christ. Number three, you must like a root, like a plant through the roots, sucks the water and the minerals and the nutrients for it to bear fruit. You need to draw your strength in a dynamic way through the roots into the almighty God for you to be fruitful. That's the word chazak. It's, 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 it's a doable term. But that encourage, be encouraged is an attitude. It talks about your mindset. It talks about how you work. Renew your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. You got to work on your mind because your attitude determines your altitude. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You not only need to change your spirit, your body, you need to change your soul. But that's a teaching for another day. But then bringing you back to Joshua. Why did God prepare all of this for Joshua? He said, Joshua, get ready. Get ready, Joshua. Because in chapter 3, chapter 3, I want to bring you to verse 4. Before we read that, hear me. Joshua was given a mandate which Moses, the leader, could not fulfill. When you look at the world around today, people, I love your pastor for more than one reason, but one of the main reasons is heart beats for missions. And I do too. For me, my whole, I have written a, a note for myself. My desire, missions, my desperation, missions, my prayer, missions, my effort, missions, my vision, missions. I live for missions. I will die for missions. What is missions? It is taking the gospel to the unreached people. Somebody preached to you. That's why you are here. And somebody else needs to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thomas the Apostle, one among the twelve, came to India. Landed in Kerala, died in Tamil Nadu. India is not an unreached place. Gospel is in India is as old as the gospel in the world. But yet today, when you look at the statistics, majority of India is not saved. When God saved you, 2 Timothy 1.9, he called you. You carry not only the privileges of the gospel, you also carry the responsibility of the gospel. Because Joshua had a mandate to finish what Moses began, you and I, corporately as a church, we have the responsibility to finish the Great Commission. 
majority do not know i am working a lot in uttar pradesh now we been working for many years but more intensely now we know because of the current government things are very intimidating doesn't matter to us almost every 3 months once i am there in uttar pradesh in fact in month of october i am going to be flying down twice into uttar pradesh you know what is our dream what is our prayer what is our effort we're joining with couple of other ministries that within the next year within the next 10 years we have drawn out a plan we're going to give up a best shot we want to see a minimum of 1,7452 new churches planted in the state of uttar pradesh for people who do not know what uttar pradesh is the population of uttar pradesh is around 240 million people that means it's around approximately 24 crore people if uttar pradesh today becomes a separate nation on its own it will become the fifth or the sixth largest nation in the entire world 75 districts 822 taluks that's what we call it here but up north they call it the blocks 107452 villages in uttar pradesh christian population is 0.18 you think you and i have no responsibility somebody should rise up joshuas like you should rise up capstone should rise up and then god speaks to joshua chapter 3 verse 4 if we will read that please he says hey, joshua tell the priests who are carrying the ark of the covenant and tell the people to keep a certain distance He says since you have never traveled this way before they will guide you stay about half a mile behind them keeping a clear distance I like it in my King James it says keep a space because you're going to walk away you have never walked before that is what I want to bring the word to you today as I'm going to kind of conclude my word this afternoon God prepared Joshua saying hey Joshua now the time has come I want you to arise Before Jesus came the angel had to create the kairos but after Jesus came by faith you create your kairos moment Amen God says capstone church God is telling you individual you have done well for the last 40 years I've been preparing you but now is the moment I'm preparing you to walk away you have never walked before You're not going to follow a trail but you're going to leave a trail behind Bible says in the New Testament I has not seen ears have not heard and nor has it entered into the heart of man the great and the precious things what God has prepared to them that love him and are called according to his purpose by that what do I understand there is still an unseen unheard and an undone and God is preparing you for that generations have worked we salute them for that we honor them for that but they have not taken our nation India Today God's eyes are upon you like his eyes was upon Joshua. But if you are going to do the same things what our forefathers did the same way, same method and expect a different result, probably we are fooling ourselves and everybody around us. God did not say hey Moses Joshua walk the same way Moses walked he said I am preparing you to walk away that you have never walked before you're not going to follow a path you're going to create a path by your step of faith Capstone are you ready When the Lord Jesus Christ was on the boat disciples caught in a storm Peter was there fisherman in the boat He said if it is you tell me to come. You know what is a boat? Please understand. Boat is a man's invention. Boat is something they have been using for generations. When Peter jumped the boat, he left the tradition, he left the convention. He says I will do what you do. Away you have never walked before. Prayers you have never prayed before. sermons you may have never preached before get ready god is preparing you for that and i believe i know when the lord spoke this thing to me i was in tanzania years ago we've been working there for over 18 years 
when god told me to become a pastor in bellary i was very reluctant i didn't want to be a pastor at all because i i come from that little town all the pastors i saw either they were hungry or poor i didn't want to be a pastor at all i said no way but then the lord told me then i told put some conditions to the lord if you want me to pastor a church from bellary i will pastor a church but i never want to receive a penny in foreign donation but i want to give into foreign missions people laughed at me when i told that number 2 i said i want to send foreign missionaries abroad it is not the time of receiving it is a time of giving and today as i stand and preach this day i have sent four missionaries from bellary church into africa we have funded foreign missions from bellary church without one rupee of foreign funding but well now i live in dubai and i give from dubai also you put me on moon or if i go with elon musk to mars even there i will support missions that's in my dna but the point i'm trying to make is god has prepared you this 15 years we thank god for this journey but i want you to look up like god told joshua get ready you're going to walk away you have never walked before are you ready for the unconventional are you ready to become uncomfortable or are you going to say let's play it safe pastor please don't 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 let's not risk it because when moses came to the red sea he took the rod and hit it the sea parted into two a path appeared and they crossed but now god tells joshua now you're going to walk away you have never walked before take the ark of the covenant and tell the priest what should i do i have strengthened myself lord i am ready now to walk away i have not walked before there is a jordan overflowing and god tells joshua no following the precedents no doing what your senior pastor did but i want you to do something that you have never done take your step and put it into the overflowing jordan wait 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 this is not what moses did this is not what my senior pastor did but god is not preparing you to follow a path he is calling you to leave a trail behind but you know what we do we have been chosen like joshua anointed like joshua prepared like joshua but now is the real time coming if the jordan stops you cross into the promised land promised land is not only your privileges it also contains your responsibility you know what one too many of us christians are doing we are waiting at the river jordan and saying god you stop the flow then i will step and i will cross it is not going to happen i told you in the new testament you create the kairos moment you know what god told joshua you step and then it will stop for the river to stop joshua had to take a step of faith time and again god has told this to me in fact god gave me an interpretation of tongues my favorite quote one step of faith one step of faith is a giant leap for victory amen but when joshua stepped into the jordan his first step was in water but the second step was on dry ground when you step by faith god will test you when 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 you step into that river jordan you are a bundle of nerves no matter no problem but when you step into the water your second step will be on dry ground what is it that god is calling you for you know god is not asking you to go to africa immediately i told in the first service i'm telling you begin where you are do what you can use what you have begin where you are god will take you where you should be use what you have god will give you what you don't have amen do what you can do god will empower you to do the impossible hallelujah but god is calling you to walk away you have never walked before he is calling you to step into a overflowing jordan when god calls you to do something hey listen to me like i told you today for me to preach you wake me from the sleep and say pastor srini preach without knowing i may start preaching even in my half sleep but 32 years back 36 years back that testimony was like the river jordan for me my knees wobbled my eyes went blank mouth went dry but today when i stand here my uttar pradesh the vision that we have 
it looks like a jordan i have stepped in by faith people laughed at me come on man this is too preposterous it cannot happen i said i don't care my first step is in water and i will step onto the dry ground and you know when joshua and the priest stood on the in the middle of the river you know what happened the 2 million israelites they crossed over into the promised land when you capstonians like your pastor calls you rise up like joshua create that kairos moment but before you go you strengthen yourself you need to work on you yourself and then when you walk away you have not walked before and take that step of faith god will talk to your pastor what to do but when you step in by faith you know what every jordan will stop and your eyes will behold millions transported into the kingdom of god and what has happened till now will be history and you will not be a person who will merely read history but you will be a history maker and i believe god is positioning you for that every individual and you corporately i believe god is positioning you for a new now stand up with me in prayer as we look to god this afternoon i pray this 15th year will be a new beginning something that your eyes have not seen something that your ears have not heard your hands have never done but i pray today that god will prepare you i met a couple after the service they said pastor listening to you there's a deep discontent in us i said that's a good thing it begins with that you should be dissatisfied you should not be happy with what you have where you are desire for more and god is preparing you to walk away you have never walked before every eye be closed as i pray with you as every eye is closed talk to yourself god and save you just to take you to heaven he saved you he called you according to his grace and his purpose nothing of yours and as you stand here today if you say yes pastor shrini i may not understand it fully it's fine but i at least want to believe that god has a great plan for me and i am willing my first step is i am willing that's it begins with that if that is you today i just want you to lift your hands as i pray with you today as a servant of god i am going to pray for god to touch you limitations will break in your life you're going to be positioned where you will step into jordan and every step will stop every jordan which will facilitate millions to enter into the kingdom of god hallelujah to walk away you have never walked before thank you jesus father while we thank you for the last 15 we look forward for the coming years like joshua had to arise i pray capstone will arise they will create the kairos moment with their commitment and their faith in the name of jesus that every jordan they will step first step will be in water but the second step will be upon dry ground i pray you will cause them to walk away they have never walked before and i pray that you will cause them to fulfill what you have chosen them for prepared them for anointed them for i pray for your blessing upon every single person here family that they will experience your goodness your greatness they will live to fulfill your purpose we want to thank you for this wonderful time we come at lord every person every leader every member every family the pastor and his family into your hands capstone as a whole into your hands they will see the glory of god they will fulfill the works of god thank you in jesus name we pray and everybody said aloud amen come on people say aloud amen god bless you i pray that you will grow in this that you will step into every overflowing jordan it will look very intimidating 
But when you step, it will stop. And you will see the glory of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated just for a couple of minutes. If you're here for the first time, thank you for being patient with us. We are usually not this late. We start at 11 o'clock. And just for today, please excuse us. Thank you once again. Um, you know, you, we, some of you may be thinking uh, we are in a season where we're, you know, we have nowhere to go. And God is saying, I'm taking you where you have never been to. And that's a very, you know, and I, I think that's how I started off this season as we entered into the church also. Um, felt like I have nowhere to go. And, um, you know, thank you for bringing that word to me today. And um, I'm, When you don't know where you're going, it, it may be scary. And that's probably why God told him, don't be, be, be strong and courageous. You can do this. And I'm taking you to places where, where you have never been. As a church, let's look forward to that. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's going to be a great, great season. We're going to close, close the service in a couple of minutes. We're going to take our offerings and our tithes at this time. Um, uh, I've got a couple of, couple of announcements. At the end of the service, we have a photo booth there. That's why the first service got delayed, okay? Because I told every family to go and take a picture there at the back. Um, you know, if, you have, if you're on a Facebook, just do make sure you cannot click a picture and put it on the... Facebook and hashtag Capstone Hyderabad. All right? Even Instagram. Even uh, you, Instagram too. Uh, if you're not, still take a picture. <laughs> and I say, you're old. I'm old. <laughs> All right, so uh, I, I, on, I don't know if they do Snapchat also. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what does they do. So... Uh, wherever you need to put, please fill it up. <laughs> uh, also, we got we got a couple of things to do. I, I don't have the cup. Do I have the cup? Can I, can I get me? So yesterday we did a small gifts for pastors, um, small cups as a memory for them to take away from our church. Um, uh, many pastors have come yesterday uh, from multiple locations to join us, and uh, they were blessed. We did a conference called Game Changes Conference in the morning. Um, and of course, they had to go back to their hometowns. We got a couple of them staying back with us uh, today, here with us, three of them um, as our guests in our church. These are people we support every month. We support 30 pastors, their children for their education. And our goal is 100, 100 pastors, 100 children. Um, and so at some point, we want to see 100 churches being built, um, actually five years from now. So uh, three of them are here. So, uh, many of you are supporting, so I thought, why not put a face to the people who you support? And they graciously agreed to stay back and be with us on our celebration today. Uh, would you like to stand, uh, Pastor Prem, Pastor Stephen, and Pastor Vaskar? Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Uh, they're going to be out in the lobby. Make sure, every Capstonian, make sure you meet them. Just say, thank you for serving the Lord. If you want to bless them, go ahead and bless them. We have a small offering box set beside them. Um, we, uh, you know, you can put it in that offering box for them. That will be sent, uh, given to them completely, whatever you give to them. Is that okay? You, do that? you may be seated. Um, and then uh, um, for, for people who came yesterday, for all the pastors who came yesterday, we thought we'll give a, a small memory for them to take away our 15th anniversary cup. But uh, we got some left over. And so, uh, obviously, you can't give to every Capstonian. So we thought, why not do an auction for Capstonians? So, uh, <laughs> these cups are cost, costed us $2.99. Um, so that's our base price. You can give more and buy a cup. Does it make sense? All right, so uh, apparently, the first service wanted to buy everything, and they hid the cups, right? They hid the cups for you. So how many cups we got? 10, 15? I don't know how many of it left. Everything that um, you put, uh, you um, you give for the cup, will go into missions again. Okay, so don't don't worry about that. So buy, a, pay whatever price you want to pay, uh, about two twenty nine, two ninety nine, and then take it and that will go into missions. Is it okay? All right. So those are three things that I told you right now. Take a picture at the photo booth. Make sure you meet the pastors. 
and if you can go fast and buy please go and buy fast the car all right uh, at this time we'll take our offerings and our tithes let me take a moment to pray with you right now as you prepare to give to the lord father thank you once again for the opportunity to serve you through our giving would you please accept our offering god and would you, would you use it for the extension of your kingdom thank you for everyone who's choosing to give may they receive 100 folds and 10000 folds and a miracle that they require as they choose to give you sacrificially bless you god in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you as you give Thou hallelujah, thou hallelujah. 
would you like to stand to your feet? Let's do the Lord's Prayer together as we close the service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the love of our Father, and the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with each one of us, now and forever. And all, people, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let me wish you one more time. Happy 15th anniversary. Amen. Oh.